So in this video, I'm going to show you all the little tweaks we do to get Visual Studio Code aware of and working with Anaconda. I'm actually going to start on the Anaconda side just to set up my environment. So I'm going to go to Start menu here, and then we will uh, scroll down to Anaconda. And when I, I'm going to check, I guess the command prompt, but I want you to right click on it and go more and then run as administrator. So I find uh, when I do updates to the base install, stuff comes in okay, but it's the cleanup part after where I've seen that I can't remove files. So I wanna make sure I'm running as administrator when I do these next operations. Also, I want to, I just change the properties here so you can see what I am doing, just in case. Give us a second, it takes a second to pop up. Uh, I uh, will go 24. It'll look really big, but then it's going to be a lot easier to follow. And so, uh, by default, put me in C Windows System 32, but you might notice that the there is a prompt here called base. So, this particular command prompt is set up, we'll say, Anaconda Python Aware. So, I can go just Python, and I can go uh, hyphen version or it could be double hyphen we'll find out real quick there we go and that it might be a single single hyphen v might have worked the same way but basically the base is set to 3.8.8 okay now uh, i set virtual environments which allows me to use different versions of python and basically it's either go the latest or whatever works with the technology <laughs> That I'm trying to integrate. Uh, so we'll be able to get to a 3.9 by setting up a virtual environment. Even though the base Anaconda is a couple of versions behind, uh, it doesn't stop it from creating a virtual environment that can be on a different version. And that's what virtual environments are all about, isolation. And you may need a specific version of Python because it works with a specific library that gives you some functionality that you are uh, looking for. So one of the first things I do, and this does take a, well, a couple of minutes, is to update the base install, right? And that. So even even after a fresh install, that's whatever was bundled in with that installer, I do find that running uh, so conda space update space hyphen hyphen all I copy paste it from a document and I'll put all these instructions in the description and that. Uh, and so it's going to spend a while looking at my local machine. What packages do you have going out to the repo to see if there's an update and then making a big list of software that needs to be upgraded. So this can take a while depending on your network connection. And I guess how busy, you know, the whole internet is and this backend servers that actually uh, maintain the repo. So I'm going to pause my video and come back. Uh, you get a little message about do you want to proceed? And I'll be saying yes. Uh, but this can take uh, a few minutes and that and things will start speeding up uh, after. So it is back. And uh, these are all the lists of things that can uh, be upgraded. So I'm going to go yes on this and let it proceed so it's going to download install and then verify so that can be uh, take some time as well so i'll pause the video and come back when it's done so this has been running for a while now but you might have saw uh, a new version of python come by your screen there and so it'll keep rolling and we'll check everything. Uh, I think we're 3.8.8 .8 and I saw a Python right there, 3.8.12. So we'll check that out uh, once it's all done. And again, this is just the install. There's gonna be like a verification and a cleanup process. So this can take some time. So I'm uh, seeing the work done. So I'm thinking it's done <laughs> in that. So, uh, it's usually on this last part, if you don't run this as administrator, where you start to see uh, not so much they can't update things, they can't remove old versions. So it finally, it finally finished, and uh, the reason my screen looks like the way it does is I typed in CLS for clear screen, just so you know. Uh, and, that. and so 
that did take a while, so uh, be patient with it. But it was clean uh, and that. And I said we were going to check the Python version, I think. Double hyphen version. And we're on a 3.8.12. So yeah, so Python went up as well as a whole bunch of other libraries that are part of the Anaconda install. Now, uh, we're just using a, a like a little corner of, a, of Anaconda. It does come pre-bundled with a bunch of uh, data science uh, libraries and tools and GUIs. Uh, they're all there. But what we're going to do now is go on and actually create some virtual environments uh, so that we can run the latest uh, version of Python. Now, there's one more command I like to do is I like to uh, initiate or, uh, all of my command prompts, make them aware of uh, Python. So this affects the PowerShell one. So uh, conda init hyphen hyphen all. And that's going to, it'll say a list of different shells that update it. But it is so that what I'm after is that actually I get this little prompt here when Python's running uh, about which one it's in. Right now we only have one environment base in that. So we're going to take care of that in a second here uh, and create a few more. Now, uh, Another command I like to do, just in case, it depends what like version of Anaconda you get. I think the latest has this built in, but just in case it doesn't, uh, I'm going to tell it to add Conda Forge as a channel that it can look at to get software packages. So that's all that pre-bundled uh, libraries that work with each other. Typically is what you're after so that you don't have any software conflicts. Uh, conda forge so config add uh, to channels conda forge i think it's there by default but it depends you know what release you get sometimes it goes missing so i like to add it if it says a uh, warning it's already there uh good right but it's moving it to the top of the list so it goes to conda forge this is uh packages that are kind of maintained by the anaconda people so if it's looking for stuff it'll go there first and if it doesn't find it it'll go off to another channel to see if it can uh, find it elsewhere so this is where i'm going to create sort of an empty or blank environment so conda create I have to give it a name hyphen hyphen name and i'm going to call this one jst7010 so it's going to spin a little bit and set up a directory. It, uh, there is a, in your install, so for me, C apps, Anaconda, there's a subfolder called ENVs. So e, yeah, ENVs. And inside there are your virtual environments. So there's going to be another folder, or it's going to be a folder added to it called GST710. And what it does is it is it will install, when I tell it to, uh, it will install a bunch of software libraries just in that folder. And we can dynamically switch to that folder as our base for Python in that. So yes, I do want to proceed in that. And it tells you a little bit of how you actually, you know, activate that environment or like kind of hop into it. Now I'm going to actually add some, uh, should I, I'll make one more called QTUI. And the UI for user interface based on the Qt, the latest uh, PySci 2. So I'll get that created as well since we're here. Uh, I create a whole bunch more for geoprocessing and big data uh, and uh, point cloud stuff. But we'll just create these two. And then you can practice switching between them. And yes, we'll install that as well. Uh, and then after this is done, then I want to actually add software to the virtual environment. And so that's conda install. And the name I want to install it into is disco JST7010. So uh, for my base install, uh, I like to add one thing, the latest version of pandas. And that helps you work with tabular data. So you can quickly analyze it in that, and you can even plot it uh, to a chart. So I'm just going to hit enter, and we should, that should be good. Yeah, that looks good. Now, if you need a specific version, there's, you can go 
equal sign and put in a build uh, a version number and then a build number uh, by just saying pandas i get the latest right which will also get me the latest python that it works with too now the whole idea is that these are all bundled and checked so you know that all the different software versions actually work with each other and you're not going to have a bunch of conflicts or uh, one pack you say well i want this library and another one say i want a different version of the other library and then things not working so this is going to give us uh, a base install of pandas but it, you'll notice that it's probably based on python 3.9 so we might see that flash by the screen once it's done solving and that. so if we go down here, it's going to add a few libraries. Uh, but if you look at the Python one, we go cross 3.9.7, right? So I'm going to go yes to that. And we'll do a similar process on uh, QTUI. We're going to add pandas and we're going to add PySide 2. So I'm going to let it, uh, I'll pause the video and just let it uh, burn through this install. And that. So that's uh, wrapped up. That looks good. I use the up arrow on my keyboard to get my last command. If it will agree with this, it did work with me. And I want to install the same thing into uh, my other virtual environment called QTUI. So pan. Oh, it added a bit more there. Uh, pandas yes so and then we'll add pi side 2 on top of that and, and so pandas is really about you know quickly working with tabular data whether it's in csv file even a, a shapefile dbf uh, file as well so it can quickly turn all that stuff into what's called a data frame so mat no matter where it's coming from it turns it into a data frame it's going to go yes to this uh, this might be a little faster because it just downloaded these packages and that. So it turns all your data into a data frame and it can be easily uh, shot into other libraries than that. Uh, even if your data is not in uh, like a two dimensional table format. But we'll just let this uh, roll and then we'll add PySci2. And then our virtual environments are going to be pretty close to being set up. Okay, so that's done. Up arrow again to bring back that command. And what I want to put in there now is Py side two and that's the part that has all the cute uh controls in qml so we'll let that roll so again just to show you uh the difference uh we're in the base environment so if we go python at knife inversion so 312 312. And then you can go conda activate. Uh, and let's say we activate GIST 7010. Okay. Now notice the prompt at the beginning, right? It's telling you, hey, GST 7010. Okay, so it's letting you know you're in a different environment. And if I go up arrow twice, Python version. And here I'm running uh, 3.9.7. Okay. And if I Let's see, conda activate QTUI. It's probably in the 3.9 range. It may all be all the way up to 3.9.7. It's also a 3.9.7. So you do have the ability to run uh, different versions of Python. Again, you may have a library that only works uh, with a certain version of Python. And that may be because it simply hasn't been tested with the latest. So. And that. So I'm actually going to wrap this video here and we'll look at the Visual Studio Code configuration in a third video. That's all for now.